Hi, this is Anne with an anagram to help you get started on your week one work. Um, this is a walkthrough of task three. It is, um, I'm going to do one recording for two classes, COSI 1010 and INET 1580. One's a JavaScript class and the other's a, a web authoring class. But both this week use HTML projects to get started in coding in the Replit environment. Um, the last time I made this video, I, I used the INET 1580 um, class slides to walk through. This time I'm going to use COSI 1010. The directions for task three should be nearly identical. Um, the only thing that's a little different is the text in a couple of places. So um, on, the, on that point, as with any other, when you have a video, take the video as a general set of instructions and guide and how to, but always follow the instructions in the slides that you're given for the week. They'll be more specific and more up to date. Okay, so what's happening in task three is um, you've already created your account on the online coding environment called replit.com. And now what we wanna do is create a first project make some changes and simply walk through some of the processes that you'll use every time you do work in this environment. So um, we wanna create a whole hello world web page. Um, that's the traditional way you start with any new coding language is, is code up some sort of hello world um, project. All right, I have an account that belongs to my cat. It's a little hard to tell where you're going to land um, when you first open up Replit. So um, this is a busy cat. It doesn't look like it on this page. Um, this is his homepage. Um, and we could start and um, create our new REPL from here. Any place you see this plus button that if you hover over it, it says new REPL. Um, you may well be on a page that looks more like this one where I have clicked on this little hamburger menu. And um, now if I click on my REPLs, because Winston's been a busy cat, he's got a whole lot of individual REPLs. He's even got some folders. Um, but I'm going to walk you through. Um, I could use, it, use this Create button, or I'm going to come over here and do New REPL. OK. The language for both classes this week is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, the programming course will occasionally use a different language for the projects, but don't worry about that now, we'll get to it. And with, um, and with the web authoring class, that will always use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript projects. Now, I, this is a drop-down menu. If you don't see HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can simply start typing it. And the choice will pop up to the top and you can click it. Okay, then you need to give your project a name or a title, and that is Hello REPL. Now, note, there's no space in this name. The H is not capitalized. The R is capitalized. That's known as camel case. We're going to use that naming convention consistently this semester. And um, you just need to get used to it. Basically, words are, are distinguished by the first letter of any word, but the first one is capitalized. OK, once you've got that, double check that this is spelled right, capitalized right, spaced right. Create your REPL. And you're going to see one thing a little different here. Because Winston has walked through this exercise in the past, even though I specified hello REPL for my project name, he gets hello REPL-3. Um, and that's okay, um, particularly if you're in COSI 1010 and you've previously been in the web authoring class, that may happen to you. So just go ahead. Or if you're taking both classes at the same time, one of your projects will be Hello REPL and the other will probably be Hello REPL-2 or Dash 1 even. Um, you type the right stuff in and then just make sure that you're using um, following directions. And this project name won't matter to me that much. I care a lot about a lot of details, but there are some things we can't help. OK, um, as soon as we create this, we are given working code and a run button. So um, always test your code when you first get it. And what you see here is when I click run, I get 
a working rendered web page over here in what's called my preview pane. The text here comes from this text on line 10. This is not particularly well formed um, HTML code, but it does render fine. And that's all you need to worry about right now. So with that, we've gotten through step one of five in our slides. Step two of five, we've run the code. And now we're going to start making changes to it. And this is where you will have slightly different text um, depending on which class you're in. Now, this says change line 10 to have this text. Okay. Um, you don't, you're welcome to type this in. And I know a lot of students um, like typing in code themselves uh, because it helps them get a feel. It goes slower and it helps them get a feel for, um, for the syntax. I'm going to pick this text right up off the slide. So I'm just going to copy that and come over here. And the direction said change line 10. So I'm going to look and find here's the line number. There's line 10. And I'm going to delete that and insert this. I'm going to line these up. It's not absolutely necessary, but it makes me feel better. Um, and replace this bracketed text with your name, or in this case, Winston's name. OK, and this is going to sound silly to some of you, test after each change. OK, so. Make sure that when you've changed something over here, that change is reflected in the preview pane. Let's go back and look at our next change. Find and change the body tag to give your page some color. So if you look back at this, we've got a completely white page, which isn't very interesting. And we do have a body tag. So what are we supposed to change that to? OK. So we're supposed to change that tag to look like this. Don't add a second tag. You can either, actually what may be more instructive is, I'm just gonna grab this, Control C to copy it. Come over here. And if you're going to put an attribute that changes how the body tag works, it has to be inside the angle brackets. So these, less than greater than signs are known to coders as angle brackets. And I want to have a color inside the body tag, which is delimited by those angle brackets. Okay. Now, I just took this right off the slide. So if I run it, again, test every time, I get this nice blue color that Winston and I happen to like. Um, but you could, there's a link to a page that has the 140, maybe one named CSS colors. And the basics are available. So if I change it to yellow, I get that. Um, don't change it to black because that works, but you can't see the text. Okay, so choose some color. Um, there are light versions of many colors. Okay, so light green, just choose a color that you like. Um, have, I don't give you much creativity on this assignment, so at least enjoy the color choices. Um, and then finally, find and change the title tag to, con to contain your last name instead of replit. So here's the title tag. We'll put Winston's last name there and we test OK, um, and that seems to work. Now, you can definitely mess this up. Um, but let me let me show you some some errors you can find later. What you don't see is that this title text shown anywhere in the preview pane. And that's because the preview pane is never a complete rendering of your web page in order to. Actually see what you typed into the title title tag, 
you need to open your code in a new tab. And to do that, you come over here and find this little symbol and you get the nice hover over message open in a new tab. So I'm just going to click that. And the internet gerbils are running in their little wheel, running, running, running. It doesn't usually take this long. I'm going to be a little impatient and hit enter. <laughs> this was working really fast a few minutes ago. Um, sometimes the internet does slow down, especially on a Sunday afternoon when people upgrade their systems. I'm going to close that and then come over here and just try it again. Okay, so that finally came back um, and um, we get our page, but the thing I wanted you to see was that up here in the tab for the page, we now see that text we talked in, we, we typed into the title area. Um, things that can go wrong, uh, if you don't get your syntax right here, so for example, you miss that colon and you type it as a semicolon, you'll see that you don't get any color. Okay, so every single character is really important here. You need to be really super careful. If you don't close, close a tag, um, you may find that things either work or don't work. I'm surprised that one does work. Um, if you, what else could you do wrong? Um, you certainly could, could simply, you could end up with two body tags. Um, so just know that every character can make a difference. You'll find different ways to debug this and to find errors later on. And I think, um, oh, screenshot. I'm gonna do my screenshot really quickly. Um, you've got uh, reading you can do and viewing for how to do screenshots on your machine. I use the SNP tool and um, let me just bring that over here. I use the SNP tool. Um, and when I do a new, I get this little arrow and I want to create a screenshot that shows a few things. I don't want the whole window. I don't want the whole screen. Okay. I need to know you can take screenshots of portions of your screen. That's an important thing you're, you're proving to me you can do. If you need help with it, let me know. Um, I do want you to include the URL, okay? URL is spelled URL. Uh, some people do say it URL, um, but it's, I think it is more properly always pronounced as a URL. That's your web address to this page. I want to see that in the screenshot. And I want to see this and this and that. And then you need to save your screenshot to your hard drive and then load it back into the project, which I'm gonna do real fast here. So um, I'm gonna use this button, um, it's the diskette button to save. Um, and let's see, we'll just call this the demo screenshot. Okay. Um, and if I go to my, I've got that folder, actually handy dandy. Okay, so this is the screenshot I just saved. And there are two ways to upload it. You can go over here and get an upload file menu. Um, but work, what works really well is if you have your file explorer um, open, you can simply drag that over here to the files tree and drop it. And I want to see that screenshot in this project. And then you're also going to include it in the doc file that you turn in for the week. And that is plenty for now. <laughs>